Uh, Chair Durbin has stepped out and left me to chair in his stead, and I'm also I'm next like you in better. <laughs> Should You're doing a hell of a job. Not in public, Senator Kennedy, please. You're doing um, a hell of a job. Okay, so uh, I have the, um, the privilege of sitting on both the Judiciary and Intelligence Committees. Uh, and let me just start by saying, I think there's no serious doubt about the collection value of this overarching authority. And the most important question that we need to be focused on at this hearing is U.S. person queries. That is the principal source of concern for me and I think for many of my colleagues. And Mr. Olson, it's the case, is it not, that the FBI can query this database for U.S. person communications simply seeking evidence of a crime. It does not have to be a national security investigation, correct? It is correct, uh, Senator. Thank you for the question that the FBI can search using a U.S. person identifier for either foreign intelligence or evidence of a crime, but there must be a reasonable basis to believe that there is information in the Section 702 data that would be responsive to such a query. Yeah, why should there not be a warrant requirement for these searches, which are known as crime-only searches, whereby FBI agents are seeking the communications of Americans, either considering opening a criminal investigation or in the midst of a predicated criminal investigation? So why should there not be a warrant requirement for such a U.S. person query? So, so stepping back uh, for a moment, if I may, just to provide just some, for a moment, very quickly, uh, Section 702 is a foreign intelligence tool. It's yes. not a law enforcement right. tool. The, the so why is it used for domestic law enforcement purposes? It, it has been used exceedingly rarely where a query using a U.S. person identifier uh, would have identified information that did not have a foreign intelligence purpose. So outside of the national security realm, not involving a terrorism or espionage or cyber, charge or, or investigation? Yeah, so it can be used for this purpose, and it has been used for this purpose. 2022, six, it was six, 16 different times. 14 of those times where it was used for evidence of a crime only were where the U.S. government had an affirmative discovery obligation to search. Well, we'll get into those numbers in a yeah. second, but it begs the question, if it's so rare as you state, why not go get a warrant? I, th I, th I think the initial idea was that there would be occasions, perhaps, where an agent or an analyst would find evidence of a crime only, not national security information, in the 702 data and would want to be able to use that. And it has happened that an agent found evidence of child abuse while looking at Section 702 data. So pure evidence of a crime that Different they were Different case. Able we're talking about seeking evidence of a crime only. We're not talking about encountering evidence of other crimes in the course of querying foreign intelligence information. Right. We're talking about U.S. person queries whose sole purpose is investigating domestic crime why should that not require a warrant? The, the, the reason for not requiring a warrant is that this is lawfully collected information uh, that is in the FBI holdings, uh, and to simply wall off the FBI, for example, in the child abuse context, from seeing that information and using it would prevent them from being yeah. able to follow That's up a different a fact pattern. That's encountering evidence of a crime in the course of conducting foreign intelligence investigations. This is a question I think that the committee needs to look into. I want to talk about this question of justification. We got a document last night, about 12 hours before this hearing, announcing some new reforms. I want to read back something that you said to Chair Durbin in this hearing. You said, starting in 2021, the FBI agent or analyst had to actually affirmatively take the step that I'm going to conduct a search using a U.S. person identifier and then say why that was reasonably likely to return foreign intelligence information. This is the justification for the query that has to be entered into the system. But it's the case, isn't it, that until 12 hours ago when we received this, they only had to enter that justification if they actually looked at the results. They did not have to enter that justification to enter the query, correct? That's correct. It was only if there was responsive information from the query. At that point, there would be the obligation to right. so just, they can, justify. Right, so they can enter the query, and they're going to see substantive information 
before they view the full results, aren't they going to see a number of results? They may see some metadata. They may even see some preview content, correct? I don't believe that there would be any opportunity to review any content of, the, of what was uh, produced in response to the query before entering the justification. No metadata. I'm not sure about that. I, I, it, well, I'm it's not, metadata either way, isn't it? Because it reveals whether or not the U.S. person being investigated has had contact with anyone in the FBI's portion of the underlying 702 database, correct? It may simply be sent. I, I don't know the exact answer. Oh, I'm out of time, it, may but I, it may simply be a response that there is responsive information in the data, but nothing further. I'm out of time, but let me just say, so as I said at the beginning, I don't have any doubt about the foreign intelligence value of this. But the U.S. person query aspect of this is really concerning to the Congress. I don't think you've effectively made the case that there shouldn't be a warrant requirement, whether or not it is constitutionally required for a U.S. person search that is crime only. And it just, it, it undermines the, the, the feeling about transparency. When you and your colleagues making the rounds for the last few months about you know, touting the reforms you've implemented have been explaining to us that, well, ever since the reforms were made, we have to state a justification for the query. When it turns out that you only had to state the justification for the query if you actually decided to look at what the search revealed. So U.S. person queries is an area ripe for statutory changes. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thanks, Senator Ossoff. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, every day when I'm home in